It's Fightful's The Hump with uh, Jimmy Van and Sean Ross Sapp. Fightful.com. Yeah, yeah. What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp. Welcome to Fightful, but not YouTube.com slash Fightful because StreamYard is having issues. So, uh, guys, if uh, if you can send word to our YouTube viewers somehow, send a smoke signal, something, uh, StreamYard just isn't working with YouTube. We are on Twitch. We are on X right now. I'm hoping that they get this settled by tonight. And uh, I don't have access to Humper Chats right now, so it's going to be me and Jimmy just talking because we ain't going to get any Super Chats except yes, for this one, this one that... Uh, Don sends says, hi, Jimmy and Sean. Do you think Vince watches WWE? If so, what do you think his opinion on the product might be? Jimmy, I bet he hates it. Yep, I bet he watches it, and I bet that he thinks they're making so many mistakes. Yes. <laughs> I bet he does. He, I bet whenever he hears pro wrestling, he's like, oh, that's what my dad did. You're taking exactly. us back. You're taking us back 50 years. Yeah. So uh, a reminder, guys, if you can't catch us live, we are on audio platforms everywhere. I know we don't promote those quite as much, but we are on Apple, Amazon, uh, all that good stuff. And of course, you can always catch us fightfulpods.com. We are getting some super chat in. Uh, yes. Please don't send humper chats in because I don't have access to them in this studio. Uh, if if uh, it is that, uh, you know, if you all send some, I will read them tonight on the AEW post show. But I do not have access to humper chats in this studio at this very moment. But we do have a couple super chats coming in. We've got. Uh, uh, Alex Schreiner saying non wrestling question, Jimmy, who do you pick to make and win the Stanley cup? Have no horse in the race as a sharks fan. Last place is quite comfy. Interesting. I'd love to say the Edmonton Oilers, but I don't think they have the defense. Uh, I almost hate to say the Col Colorado avalanche because of Mr. Lambert, but I think either the Colorado avalanche or the Vegas golden Knights are going to magically get healthy for game one of the playoffs. Are you familiar with what Vegas does every year, Sean? Not really. No. Every year they put people on injured reserve, which means their cap space opens up. Mm -hmm. Then they use that cap space to do a big trade. And then the injured player magically returns in time for game one. Uh, of the okay. And it's legal. Uh, so they yeah. do it every year. And so right now they have uh, one or two big players on uh, injured reserve. They use that cap space. And if those guys are magically back for game one, Vegas is going to be tough to beat. So I think Vegas or Colorado. Well, guys, if you want to clear up some cap space, check out NordVPN. Buying pay-per-views on NordVPN.com slash Fightful is going to enhance your pay-per-view buying process. Now, one subscription to NordVPN has so many different benefits, but if you're a big pay-per-view buyer like myself, UFC, boxing, pro wrestling, all that good stuff, <laughs> any combination of the three, if they're doing a fight circus or something like that, this subscription will pay for itself after one or two pay-per-view buys. Change your virtual location, pay for it at the prices that other people are paying for it in the UK, in Australia, etc., etc. And you can get different interfaces. Maybe you don't like Peacock and you want to check out the WWE Network the way that it used to be, the way that it was designed to be, the easy navigation, so on and so forth. Maybe you want to watch AEW without commercials. Maybe there's some other overseas services that you can't subscribe to and you want access to them. NordVPN.com slash Fightful gives you that with a great deal and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Even better, 24-7 tech support. So if you have trouble navigating any of it, they can help you out. Fastest VPN on the planet, NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Love Nord. Here's some good news, not great news. We can't stream to YouTube still. Uh, this was a message that we got from uh, StreamYard right before we went on the air. Jimmy actually notified me of it. They said they're working to figure out what, what the deal is. Uh, obviously, we will download the, the video of this, and we will uh, we will air it after the fact. Jimmy and I, I, I don't know what our plans will be for List Goes On now because that is actually streamed through YouTube so we might just do a little recording or something like that, talk for a few minutes. But maybe maybe they'll have, have it fixed by then too. Yeah, doubt it. Here is a good <laughs> bit of good news. I got access to the Humper Chats. Head over to humperchats.com. That's H U M P E R chats.com. And uh then and now we can uh, take your questions there, guys. I know that there are still some super chats coming in, which is pretty awesome. I didn't expect that considering the people on YouTube can't even watch this stream right now, but uh, we do still have some. 
Do you think WWE is confident about retaining their upcoming free agents like Drew, Seth, Becky, Finn, and others we might not know about? There are others you don't know about. I'm working to get the okay to reveal those. I had reported today on FightfulSelect.com. Drew McIntyre has not yet re-signed. Does this surprise you? Now, I had some absolute dumbass say, uh, get, get worked. They've got an event in Scotland. Well, I'll, I'll let you guess whose contract runs through that. Uh, it's a by, guy by the name of Drew McIntyre. Uh, but yeah, I think that they're very confident that they're going to keep all these people. And I think that they they probably should be confident that Dijak's deal is also coming up as well. As Connor says, which wrestler is the best social media and why is it Dijak? Funny enough, it's down to Dijak and Drew McIntyre, in my opinion, Jimmy. McIntyre has been excellent. He's been, I, Bring the match. I can't, yes, I can't recall ever seeing a wrestler, at least at his level, post a tweet live during his match. That was fascinating. He's maybe uh, Austin Theory did once. Did he? Maybe I he used to take selfies, right? Yeah, Theory used to take selfies. But it, uh, it he's he's really on another level. It's interesting when you think of the names we're talking about here, Sean, because these are names that seem like they have a lot of loyalty to WWE. You know, like a Rollins, like a Becky, like a McIntyre. Do you think that that? And I know that obviously you're not Hunter, and 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 so you can't get in his head. Do you think that maybe the reason they haven't finalized deals with these particular people is because they know that they are kind of loyal company people, and so they're less worried about them leaving? I think it's a series of just different, differing, differing approaches to the things, what the way things are now. Like in 2019, and understandably so, AEW was getting started. So mm -hmm. WWE was like, well, we're getting all of you guys on five-year deals. Like mm -hmm. that's just what they did. That's why so many are up this year, just in case you all didn't know. There's a whole lot of people that WWE went to back then, and they said, we're going to offer you big-ass deals. And then there were some deals they tried to rework during the pandemic. Some of them they did. Some of them they didn't. Uh, Hush says, why are they taking so long to extend their top stars? I just think it's a different approach. And uh, I'll have a story coming likely this week if it doesn't get pushed back. Maybe even tomorrow that will really highlight that on FightfulSelect.com, best $5 in the business. But I, I just think it's a different approach. And we are seeing so many different approaches within WWE right now that, I like, anytime I run a story like this, it's, it's oh, I, I almost dread it, Jimmy, because people will be like, why are you reporting this? You know he's not going anywhere. Well, no, I don't know that he's not going anywhere. Right. People said that about Cody. People said that about a lot of people. Right. Not only that, this is a guy who is very, very confident in navigating the world outside of WWE because he has navigated the world outside of WWE, and that's what led him back. I don't know anything until it happens or until we're told. Like that's we we don't get to report based off of assumptions and vibes. That's just not the way that this works. But then after WrestleMania, I'll get a bunch of has Drew resigned? Has Drew resigned? So we posted right. the update. He has told people in the company he has not resigned as of yet. And I actually had asked you that because uh, WrestleMania, when he beat Rollins, Rollins got really emotional when he left the ring. Did you see that? And Rollins looked at Drew uh, really emotional and he said, You deserve it. Uh, and so I asked you, Why did Rollins get so emotional? Is it because he, Drew's not resigning? So I, I I had asked you too, like you know uh, what that was about. So yeah, it's yeah. it's a valid thing to to talk about. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, how much do you think AEW will get for media rights? Well, I mean, if the Punk conversation with David Zaslav is any indication, it seems like one billion overall through the course of the deal seems like something that was at least brought up or mentioned. But I think if that were to happen, that would include. The library, pay-per-views, Rampage, Collision, Dynamite, uh, Exclusivity, ROH thrown in there, some reality shows. It would be an all-encompassing deal like that and probably be five-plus years. I've been I've been predicting for a while, not predicting, maybe predicting, that there's a, a gap between what Tony wants and what Warner Brothers Discovery is willing to pay. And I think it was the same thing with WWE. You know, WWE took a long time to get a new deal done. And they basically acknowledged that what they expected was not what the market called for. I think with AEW, it's going to be similar. My gut tells me that they're looking for $200 million a year. Uh, like you said, maybe in an all-encompassing deal. I don't think they're going to get that. I think they might be looking 100 100 and a quarter. 
Uh, and so I, th I think there's a gap and I think, uh, I think it's something that they're going to have to, uh, be prepared for, but I still think it'll be, be enough to make them profitable. Cause what are they getting now? Like 80 or 90, I think hundred and a quarter is still going to be enough or one fifty maybe to get them profitable. Yeah. Josh says is Gulak Gulak off TV due to the Rhonda stuff. Yes. Uh, we'll have more on that. What's the reaction backstage to the Tony Khan boys situation. I was supposed to be in touch with them. I haven't got their email. I can tell you that within AEW, they were of the belief that the boys had missed some flights and dates and things like that. And that's what had them on the chopping block. James says, Hey guys, since there isn't much going on in wrestling news, what do you guys think about the Tyson Jake fight? When is that? Uh, July. Okay. I think uh, I, I need to check the rules. I keep seeing clickbait stuff. Yeah. I um, forget now. I, I, can't, I can't recall if it's eight rounds or 10 rounds. I, something tells me it was something like 10, two minute rounds or something. Yeah, um, two minute rounds, no official judges, sixteen ounce gloves. Right. Okay, whatever, brother. I, you know what? Anybody that's new to this podcast, Sean and I had a lot of fun over the Tyson Roy Jones fight because I knew Mike was going to be smoking <clears throat> marijuana. But the thing is, after seeing the Tyson fight with Roy Jones and seeing how Mike could have knocked at Roy Jones whenever he wanted, and he didn't, and he treated it as an exhibition because that's what it was. They have now called this fight with Jake Paul also an exhibition. Mm -hmm. Uh, and for that reason, uh, it's a payday. I don't think anybody's it's getting dropped. Is. Yep. I, I think if Mike wanted to drop him, even at 59, he could, but, uh, he, nah, it's an exhibition. I don't expect anything. And Hennessy says, why was Dragon Lee replaced with Andrade for WrestleMania? Do you think him leaving AEW, uh, with him leaving AEW that Matt Hardy is WWE bound? Well, listen, Hardy boys are getting like six figures for, for WrestleCon, stuff like that. Like oh, the lineup. they're doing. Oh my God, it was insane. Yep. It was insane. I saw him at Squared Circle Expo the week before. They were there after hours as well. Like they are huge draws on the convention circuit. And I think that Matt is going to evaluate his options. Fightful Select reported this week that his deal was up in March. And for some reason, AEW extended it just through WrestleMania, which is very interesting. Like, I don't know why. Like, what's he going to do? Show up and like delete Travis or Jason Kelsey or something like there was no yeah. spot for him there, no, but no, I, I don't know about uh, dragon Lee as of yet, but <clears throat> um, love the show. Mike Pat says, love the show. Wanted to hear your thoughts on the post WrestleMania press conference, having no questions about Janelle Grant or people named in the lawsuit appearing on the show and being showcased. I mean, they are, we, we wrote a bit about this on Fightful Select. They're standing behind Nick Khan and Stephanie McMahon in that sense. As far as the questions, um, that's that's not necessarily uh, true. I, I know that Brandon Thurston asked about Brock Lesnar. Uh, John Alba had other assignments or else he would have. He was writing for Cody's uh, hometown paper. So, I mean, he didn't get a question in night one or else he would have asked about it. So, I mean, I, I want to say this. You never know what an individual person's assignment is. Uh, who they're on the behalf of and what their content goals are. I personally wish some things could have been or would have been asked, but um, yeah. Well, let me let me just add this. So you got to remember that when the suit first dropped around Royal Rumble time, people did ask, yes. right? Because it was fresh then. The news that's come out since, even though it was confirmed that Nick Khan is one of the corporate executives or whatever the term was, nothing has come out that has uh, shone a negative light on him. And so for that, and same thing with Stephanie or anybody else. And so for that reason, what are you asking? And Ann Callis did an interview with John Pollock and Brandon Thurston and bless them. They asked about everything they could and they got a whole lot of no comments, can't answer that. And, and a lot of stuff like that. Um, they did. She did reveal that everybody that was to be served has been served, which I thought was a good bit of information. And gave us a timeline on that. But other than that, they're, they're, they they asked everything that they should, could ask in, in that situation. And listen, they are much better at that than I am. They they unfortunately were not able to get a lot of answers there. And they, they did everything they could. They right. they have covered that story as as well as as it could be covered. And again, that's why this week we asked around about, hey, was there any hesitation? to feature Stephanie or feature Nick Khan so prominently, or even Bruce Pritchard because of his ties to Vince and all that stuff. But yeah, we, we posted a bit of an update on that this week and we were told that they are standing by those people as things stand. And 
the way that people in WWE viewed it was Stephanie McMahon picking a side. That's how they viewed it. They they said that it was her giving her stamp of approval. And to be fair, everybody in that company, listen, you don't have to agree with it on a moral level, but everybody that I talked to in that company would welcome her back. Sure. sure. And I mean, that ain't that ain't me just saying that's not me endorsing her. That's people that I talk to endorsing her. But apparently people are hating the Twitch ads. A lot of complaints about that. Listen, I can't help that. We are a YouTube first platform. New Lack City says, although I can't stand the bad faith comparisons about the decision to show the all in footage, I have to say this needs to pay off something on AEW and hopefully it's eventual return of Jack Perry. Hopefully uh, they have the opportunity to make him a real heel. And then he also says, seeing the bad faith, hypocritical pearl clutching from people who were fine with Punk bringing up AEW and all in, not to mention the shots WDB took this weekend. Now to shame AEW is ridiculous. Be co consistent either way. Roll the tape. So let's talk about this, Jimmy. That's the big subject uh, as of right now. On Saturday, and I it's so wild. I got tipped off to this by my, my friend who is not in the wrestling business. And he's like, hey, Tony's wild for this one. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Because I had heard a rumor. And then he said it, and I was like, how have you heard this? And I was told it was dropping basically around the time that my WrestleMania show would end. So I stayed, I was like staying on the line, like trying to 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 track a criminal in one of those movies, just keeping it around until, until it happened. And they announced that the Young Bucks will show the all-in footage. Now, they didn't say CM Punk, Jack Perry, but immediately Fightful Select asked around and were told, this is not false advertising. They are going to show it. It led to a lot of controversy, Jimmy, already, because we haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. People, important people in the company haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. But um, they're going to roll it. I'm interested to hear what you have to say and what our audience has to say. Get your humper chats in. But, uh, yeah. So, Tony Khan did an interview with Justin Barrazzo for Sports Illustrated, uh, and he explained why he's doing it. And this is a quote from Tony Khan. He said, the decision is based on putting on the best show for AEW as well as driving interest for Dynamite and our Dynasty pay-per-view on April 21. And I should note that he did not confirm what the content was going to be either. He didn't say in that interview that it was going to be CM Punk, Jack Perry. And so I asked you the other day, the other day, Sean and I talked about this and I said, could this end up being FTR footage because the Bucks wrestled them at all in and they're wrestling them. Like uh, them shaving each other's backs again or some shit like or something, that. Something, something. Cause the bucks are known for their comedic trolling bullshit too. So I asked you if it could be a, if it could be that. And you said what you just said. Now you said, uh, from what we're told, it's not a bait and switch. The bucks said on social media, we're not trolling. Uh, and they talent, said talent be... asked, talent asked, and they were told, no, it's real. I asked specific, I asked people who would know, well, how does FTR feel about this? Now I didn't hear back from FTR, but why would they tip their hand right now? But from what I understood, they were of the, the line of thinking of, let's just make some money. We right. Gotta, we got a, we got a match coming up. We've done this match a lot. Let's make some money off of it type of thing. And what I was told was that Tony values Dax and cash as people. And Dax especially is a creative mind and, and helping him too much to not at least run it by them in that sense. And, um, I, People who haven't seen it seem to think that it will make Jack Perry look better than what he looks right now. However, what we have seen in the past is that Jack Perry and Tony Khan haven't necessarily been all thumbs up of late. Mm -hmm. But for people that say that it, it's not going anywhere, there's no purpose for it, I couldn't disagree more. They got their name in the news cycle during WrestleMania week where not only were they getting crushed from a publicity perspective, but WWE was taking shots over and over and over again. I got no problem with the shots. Like I know some other people do. I got no problem with it. Like it's, it's the nature of competition, whatever, but it's also within AEW's right to do this. They cleared it legally. They're going to pop probably a number off of it. Apologies. Maybe. I got a, <clears throat> didn't want to okay? talk into the mic there. Yeah. I got that asthma, man. Okay. 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 But, um, they're going to, people are saying, Oh, they're featuring somebody not on their TV show. Man, I used to watch WWE run pre-taped segments with Jim Cornette running down the WCW cards that used to happen. I used to watch WCW 
mention wrestlers of WWE by name. Billionaire Ted's wrestling war room was a thing. Like I've got no problem with that whatsoever. I see celebrities featured, fringe celebrities. Todd Crisley was on this fucking show at one point, Jimmy. <laughs> and like we're gonna sit here and say, oh, they're featuring somebody not on their show. I don't give a shit about Todd Crisley. Why do I ever give a damn about Todd Crisley? Uh, class not ass. That ain't for me. Ain't for <laughs> anybody watching Raw, we didn't give a shit. But I'll tell you what I do give a shit about <clears throat> watching this. This is general interest. It features Jack Perry. It features CM Punk, who is good friends with FTR, who is not good friends with the Young Bucks, who have a match coming up in two weeks against each other. I don't know. I mean, right now, I don't see the negative in it. Perhaps after tonight, I'll change my mind. But, like, I'm, I'm not going to pearl clutch and pretend like, oh, this is going to be the end of them. I don't see. Yeah, I see a lot of possible positives out of this. So I, I try to look at it from both sides. I, everything that we talk about, I try, I try to look at from both sides. And I will go based on the assumption that it is going to be the punk footage. So if Tony is going to air this because he wasn't happy with the Ariel Helwani interview, then I, I quite honestly, I just think he needs to get thicker skin. Like, I think if you're going to be yeah. successful in wrestling as a promoter, you have to have thick skin and not react to internet criticism or negativity and, and certainly don't do it on your TV show. On the other hand, if he's doing this because he's looking to hot shot a rating uh, as a desperation tactic, I understand he's feeling some pressure, right? He must be because the ratings for Dynamite might have been down. The key demo the last two weeks was their lowest in almost three years. And at that same time, WWE is on fire doing their best numbers in several years. So I'm sure he's feeling some pressure. And, and there are always going to be people that say, well, the rating calculations are archaic and they don't matter. I hate to break it to you, but they do matter because that's still what networks and advertisers use to determine value. So they do still matter. And it's a contract year. So if he's looking to pop a rating, I understand it. I look at it th the opposite of the way you look at it. So I look at it right now like I don't see the benefit right now until I see it. Whereas you said to me, it's a positive until I see it and, and they show me it's a negative. For me, it's, it's I don't see the benefit until I see it. If they spin it uh, so that they put over FTR and they they spotlight Jack Perry, you just kind of said it, Sean, and you and I talked about this the other day. Is Jack Perry someone that you want to put the promotional machine behind? You know what I mean? Is why someone... why isn't anybody on the roster you want to put the pro promotional machine behind? Everybody that's on your roster should deserve promotion of some sort. And if you can capitalize off of general buzz, whether somebody likes them or hates them, I mean, do that. I mean, they're they're CM Punk is polarizing. The Young Bucks are polarizing. Uh, why can't Jack Perry also be polarizing? Now, sure. If he, doesn't, if he doesn't have the in ring or the acting chops to pull that off, time will tell, certainly. And I mean, the proof will be in the pudding in, in, in that sense. But I think if you've got this there, you use it. And that's so much of what pro CM Punk's career has, has been built on is capitalizing on, you know, outside conflict and, and polarizing feelings about anybody whether it be things he says to johnny ace or vince mcmahon or or anybody it's just it's just wild to me how that i mean jimmy it's, it's so funny because people are like oh you guys make so much money off this i would love i would gladly take the pay hit to not have to cover this cm punk drama bullshit anymore i did a video jimmy a couple months ago with the help of rob fee about how this has gone on since january of 2014 a long time I was still working for onewrestling.com for free when this started. And it's it doesn't seem like it's going to end. It doesn't seem like it's going to end. So, well, you know what? This whole idea of hot shining a rating, uh, whether it be out of spite or whether it be because you're just looking to increase your numbers, this isn't unique to AW, obviously. Like WWE did this tons of times under Vince McMahon's leadership. When Holland Nash jumped to WCW, they advertised Razor Ramon for Raw, and then they introduced the fake Razor Ramon. When uh, the Montreal Screwjob happened, they teased Bret Hart appearing on Raw. Then they had a little person go out with a Bret mask on, and they had Shawn Michaels bully him in the ring. And WCW did this a lot too, especially towards the end of the run. Eric Bischoff challenged Vince McMahon to a match on pay-per-view, and right up to the match, he teased that Vince was actually going to be there. The thing is, with all of these examples, there really was no benefit to any of it. Like nothing really came of it that uh, that put the company in, in a positive light. 
And I do think that spotlighting a wrestler, it's one thing if it's a, if it's a celebrity guest host, like you're talking about Chris Lee or whatever, but when it's a pro wrestler, like, they, they showed him, they just featured okay, okay, him okay. like, okay. But, but I mean, when that, my, my thing is like, they have featured people like that often with little to no connection to pro wrestling, like none. And with no interest going in of featuring them. And I understand people say, ah, promotional, promotional. This is them promoting a way to get people to watch their own show. If all of those people tune out afterwards, nah, so be it. I don't think that we're going to see some legions of people just jumping ship away from AEW because they air this footage. I think most people pretty much have their mind made up already about it. And th that's another thing. Zero people who say AEW should be focused on growing their audience give a shit about AEW growing their audience. What they want is them to book a show how they like. Well, guess what happens when you book a show how they like? It becomes WWE light. And guess what happens when you do that? You lose about 100,000 viewers off your average. That's what happens because WWE is good right now. So do something completely different. Do your own thing. Don't become what TNA became when it started to go downhill. Yeah, I mean... It's true that, you know, they are in a tough spot, like we've talked about. I mean, WWE is on fire. AEW, they got all this fanfare for all these free agents that they brought in. None of them, as of yet, have made any difference in terms of the numbers at all. And so I understand if Tony Khan is looking for something to try to spark, you know, the numbers, looking for something to try to, to spark interest. And I understand that aspect of it. Historically, this stuff hasn't worked. Uh, and we'll see, we'll see if it does work, but you know, one thing I want to add to this, Sean, and get your, your thoughts on in terms of the timing of this. So last week they had Adam Copeland go out on dynamite and he said, there's been a lot of negative BS. So let's talk about the positives, right? He said yeah. that last week, Didn't one enjoy. week, one, no, one week later, they're bringing more negativity onto themselves and they're kind of showing the wrestling world that the guy that they fired, who's now with the other company is still kind of inside their head. So We'll see how it turns out. Kind of like what you said, where to you it's positive until you see it and they show you that it's negative. I look at it like to me, it's more negative until I see it. And then when I see it, maybe I'll see the positives in it. Sure. But but I understand why. I understand. I understand uh, the pressure Tony Khan is under. I understand that he's looking for something to ignite something. But if he's doing it because that interview with Helwani rattled him so much, like he's got to like chill with, with letting that stuff bother I him. I was heard he was pretty calm in relaying this information. Was I mean, I mean, I'll tell you one thing, a at least in interactions that I see and hear about him, I can tell you, I heard from him the night of CM Punk debuting in WWE and sincerely, the only thing he gave a shit about was Shibata. That was it. Shibata's visa issues. That's what he cared about. Um, we got some super chats, humper chats. Uh, Punky Drewster asked our opinion on the all in footage, this stuff. I just don't get the point. Either you bait and switch or you disparage a guy who doesn't work there anymore. Um, I don't mind if they go back and forth at this point, disparaging one another because punk really wasn't supposed to talk about it to the best of my understanding and did. So there you go. Um, and we got people asking about the Becky Seth stuff. So man, let's see here. Uh, what all was it? There was, uh, Diana saying any news update on Becky Seth injury health wise. Did Seth injure his eye on night two in the match with drew? Thanks for all that you do. And also punky says heard anything in regards to Becky. She was noticeably absent from raw. Obviously the feud with Rhea isn't continuing. So they both have contracts coming up. Drew got an injury in January and definitely wanted to make you sure Seth. Back. you mean, you mean Seth? Or, sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry about that. Seth. Yeah. Got an injury in January, and they brought him back. But you know what? Some rest there won't hurt him. I'm told that they were expecting him back around the draft. Becky just got off a monster book tour and was, I mean, like, they undersold. When she, they said she had strep throat, she was real, real sick as of really? Saturday as well. Like, still very sick. Still good so, in the ring. Still good in the ring. No surprise. She is who she is. Uh, her book was phenomenal, by the way. So positive. She takes a lot of responsibility for some for some things that happened in her career. It it was very nice. It wasn't like a constant burial or anything like that. But yeah, I would imagine they gave her Monday off to be like, hey, just go home, hang out with your kid, et cetera. Uh, Mick or Astro Mick says, how cool was that shot from the Final Testament Pride match where Montez flew over the corner post into our living rooms? Yes. I've got a story coming on the production. Jimmy, this production. Very well, I good. feel like we talk how how great is it that we talk about it every week? Like yep. 
It's so good. It's yep. so good. This is this like this is the shit that we used to see in like the early 90s when we go, oh my God, look at that shot. Look at that shot. And it was new and fresh and different. Kevin Dunn was resting on his laurels and his own preferences mm -hmm. and didn't allow this company to grow from a visual standpoint. And it's something that Eric Bischoff was telling me, God, six years ago. He was like, it's too sanitized. He's like, it's too sanitized and formulaic. They need to switch it up. He was right. Did you see the other the other night with Dominic where Dominic kind of waved the camera or slammed the camera, like pretended that the camera was like like the viewer? Yes. And then immediately it just kept going all the way to the ring. Yeah, it's been very interesting. I've noticed that AEW has been doing some stuff like that lately too, where they've been doing like the the one single shot and so the Renee stuff. The Renee stuff that that uh mimics Megan O'Levy at the UFC where she's standing by the the ring. And then it will show her and then they will pan up and like, you'll see Eddie Kingston coming out and he'll be charging to the ring. Very cool. That's, I mean, listen, those are my two things that I look at from AEW and I go fix these production upgrades by like doing stuff like that. And then two, turn the goddamn lights on in your venue. Stop making it look so cavernous. I understand that sometimes they don't have uh, as big of an audience there, yeah. but man, it is dark, drab, and depressing far too often. Turn the goddamn lights on. Let me see that people are there and excited to be there. You go back and you watch a lot of early AEW Dynamite. There were people standing up with their beers, cheering, excited. That's what I want to see. Even if the houses are a little bit lighter, it'll be fine. It'll be I mean, okay. if, they, if they start doing smaller houses, they can look full, right? I wish they would. So. I wish they would. But, um, and then, and then as a result, I think more people will want to go and they will fill up houses more. But I, I've talked about that too many times, right? Far too many times. Uh, will Drew make a comment about the video next week? Yeah, I think he will. I think he'll make a shot or, or a yeah, he'll do it later today. Maybe probably. Yeah. 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 Uh, we've got somebody saying that they would have preferred Tony doing an interview with the media, defending himself. Nope. You pop a rating friend, pop a rating. I am completely fine with them popping a freaking rating for this that's what i want to see lupongi vice says just popping by to say good day big weekend ahead for starcast in australia getting the chance to meet mickey james bret hart jordan grace powerhouse hobbs might overcome my childhood fear of meeting gangrel very excited <laughs> uh, habitual emoji sender gangrel you mentioned one you time mentioned. I, I messaged him and i was like hey there's this weird rumor going around that you're dead and he said only in kayfabe with a smiley face <laughs> uh we got miss kate fabe sending a humper chat with no comment on there but miss straight fire says is it accurate to say that the rock is anyone's boss in wwe besides being a director of the board he has another roles listed for tko and wwe what power does he actually have over wwe talent except influence by being the rock jimmy i'll let you handle this one he's not technically anybody's boss he has influence that's what it is. Like, so like technically is the final boss. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I mean, obviously he's got influence, but you know, if, if, if he went to Hunter and said, Hey, I'm just taking a random name, Dominic Mysterio. I don't like his face. Fire him. Hunter's not going to do that. You know what I mean? So he's, he's got influence, but he's not uh, anybody's official boss. Aaron says, I understand why AEW is doing this, but in my opinion, this footage has to show some sort of threat to Tony Khan to make CM Punk or by CM Punk to justify why he was scared for his life. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. It might not even feature Tony Khan. Um, uh, but for me, the main thing I'm, thing I'm looking forward to this footage, Sean, is I want to see this, this footage benefit somebody on the roster, whether yeah. it be, whether it be Perry, whether it be FTR, or the bucks going into the dynasty pay-per-view. I want that to be the focus. If the focus is on making CM Punk look like a dick, you failed. So the focus has to be Perry, Bucks, FTR, somebody. And Diana says, could the CCTV not be Punk versus Perry altercation? Vague graphic, Young Bucks in character, Tony's SI quote. Was it specifically confirmed to be Punk versus Perry? If the video is something else, won't there be backlash? It was confirmed to a bunch of people within the company. Now there is, I, I'll make this abundantly clear. It's wrestling. There is always a chance that one, they're lying. Two, they're working. Three, it is a swerve. However, they are adamant that it's not. I think that's the only situation that can lead to them actually getting backlash from people that support their company, Jimmy, is if they swerve on that. That'd be really because bad. Because 
yeah. it would it would be very bad. Yeah. Um. That that is not a, a yeah not something I would do. Sir Brindo says studio looks better. SRS. Hope you guys are well. Well. Um. What you guys should see is the pile of one of these chairs that is sitting right over there because it just collapsed on me the other day. So I've got to buy new furniture for this thing. Jimmy, you know how long I've been working on this damn studio. Did it's you get the dimmer switch, by the way? Did you need it? I did get the dimmer switch. Oh, there you go. One. There you go. I did not realize that they were so universal, but that's how bright yeah. it goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it Good. works. So I, I can keep it kind of low. Yeah. But I did not realize like how universally they worked. And yeah, I yeah. was like, okay. I'm going to get a little cord hider for this bad boy as well. That way it doesn't look like that, but that was my electrical my... guidance for Sean Ross Sapp, And that's about yeah. all I know. It's about all I know. I've got, got my lighting over here. I've got two mics. I got my camera there. I'm going to set up another camera, a DSLR to uh, use in here. I've got my studio PC. Finally, finally, Jimmy, I told you about my best buy woes. Yes, you did. After all that, you know, after a month, they had to refund me. And I had a, a fightful viewer that worked at Best Buy. And he's like, hey, listen, they got to do a, an exchange for you. Well, they refunded me. But then the cost of the computer that I had went up 160 bucks. Yes, you mentioned. I, mess I messaged them and I said, hey, this shit ain't happening. And they're like, well, we can't credit. I said, oh, yes, you can. And I was like, yes, you can. Or else we'll have to handle it another way. Which meant I was going to whip their asses, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. I was going to go in yes. there and That's beat what you're gonna do. their asses he was gonna assault so, people at best buy i was gonna physically assault people at best buy um but they they made it right a little bit but then the tax was still like 40 bucks more in switching it over they had to physically mail me a check and they tried to get away with not doing it i was like listen guys just driving this back and forth to your thing and in what i drive is costing me enough money like i, I don't want to deal with this bullshit anymore Give me the computer that I bought. All I'm doing is streaming stuff to YouTube on it. We'll be all right. And uh, finally, we made it work. My God. We got a bunch more Super Chats and Humper Chats. But uh, while I've got an extra second, I'm going to let you guys hear about our partner, at bet online betonline.ag is the official betting partner of fightful 100 of the time when you get the odds from fightful they are coming from betonline.ag and it's not just wrestling it's not just mma and boxing it's football it's basketball baseball hockey they have the earliest lines you can bet big with the high limits and rebet functionality they have the fastest payouts with winnings paid in minutes and the industry's best bonuses on every qualifying deposit. They've been trusted for 25 plus years. It's not some fly by night company. Bet Online AG has been there. They've done that. In addition, they're trusted by millions. They've got VIP rewards programs and a ton of popular games. BetOnline.ag. That's where I go to make my bets. That's where I suggest you go to, my friends. Please just bet what you can and bet responsibly. KE775 says, besides Roxanne, Elia, Carmelo, or you of Corey, had heard of any NXT call-ups via the draft? Yes, there will be some more. Um, there will also likely be some WWE names that head to NXT. As Which is good. Can. Smart. Smart. Yes. Uh, they, got, they got a show on CW to promote. So, yeah. Alan says, given the social media buzz lately, do you think this is the start of the WWE AEW gang wars? The fight for viewers and eyeballs seem to be growing. WWE ain't fighting for shit right now, my friend. No, they, no. they got what they got. They're no. white and hot right now. I, I actually want to ask you this for a second. Uh, you mentioned that uh, WWE took a lot of shots this week. I didn't really, I guess, notice or pay attention. Like, what shots were taken? Oh, uh, ones from Cole about, about keeping Punk in the headlines. Uh, Pat McAfee talking about 600 people being at a show. Uh, my gosh, the the CM Punk stuff. There were there were plenty this week. I was in Philly, so away from the news cycle. But I can tell you that there were enough of them. There were enough of them. Crazy says thoughts on Rocky Romero's response to Fightful. Well, we responded to that already. I spoke to uh, Rocky Romero. Uh, it was planned for Arthur Ashe. It is no longer planned for Arthur Ashe. Uh, Forbidden Door, that is. And the people I talked to within AEW and New Japan claimed claimed that it's because new japan did not want to pay the outrageous uh basically production fees associated with that rocky romero denies that i think he's probably got a pretty good handle on that stuff but you know i'll continue to talk to people about it but 
Um, I believe the people that I spoke to, but also I believe Rocky Romero. So tough spot there. If Stephanie did return in an exec role, what role could you see her in? Can't imagine it would be co-president like when her and Nick were co-CEOs back then. Yeah, I don't think that that would happen, Jimmy. I think that McMahons are out of that those spots. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know. So before she was, I believe, brand, uh, brand ambassador or chief branding officer, I believe. Because then that's the title of the Brandy Roach took on at AEW, right? So maybe if Stephanie wanted to come back and do something like that, she's she's a great public speaker. She could be a great uh, you know brand ambassador for the company. Maybe she wants to do that. Maybe she doesn't want to do anything. I saw that Linda McMahon was even there, Sean. It's wild. Which surprised me. Like, it yeah, very much surprised me. So yeah, um, surprised me. Yeah, I I think Stephanie. It's it's up to her, and if she feels like it's something she wants to do, something tells me they would welcome her back. Thomas Sandberg says a lot of questions on roll the footage night. Do most people believe AEW? Uh, they believe they should or shouldn't release the footage. What does WBD think of AEW doing this angle? If you were Tony Khan, would you release the footage? Um, it's it's impossible for me to answer the last one yet. Once I see the footage, then I'll be able to give you an answer there. WBD knows about it. They were told about it. They cleared it. They were okay with it. Do most people in AEW believe they should or shouldn't release the footage? That's in, They're in the same boat with me. They don't know what's on the footage primarily. Uh, how do you feel about these questions, Jimmy? I agree with you. It's hard when we haven't seen it. So if, again, like I said before, if, if the whole point of this footage is just to shit on CM Punk, then I don't really see the benefit. But if the point of it is to put over Perry, the FTR, the Bucks, anything, then I understand. Because then now you've got eyeballs to your show that are then going to you know, hopefully carry on down the story that you're trying to tell. So got to see the footage first. Rock hard. Joel Wood says, what's all the, or what's all the talk of WWE not getting any big free agents? Kyrie, Jade, Andrade, Naomi, Julia, Fatu, not considered top free agents. Just because AEW might not have offered them a deal doesn't mean they're not big. I don't know why there is that talk. It's not been a talk. Social media discourse, me. Sean. People yeah. don't know what the hell they're talking about. I mean, I agree. I don't think AEW ever made a play for Kyrie. That's somebody they, that WWE wanted though, but Jade and Andrade directly came from AEW. Julia didn't get an AEW offer. I don't think Jacob Fatu did either. Uh, AEW's response to finding out about Jacob Fatu was, oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> Amatonga, I don't know that he's ever had a great relationship with AEW because I, I brought that up to him, and he's like, I don't know, man. Uh, Naomi was, they wanted her back in WWE over a year ago. I reported that in January of last year. They wanted her back, and then the freeze happened. I mean, I look at her families there too, right? Yeah. So, I look at all those names and especially when he lines them up like that, I'm like, listen, is it Osprey? Is it Mercedes? Is it you know, Adam Copeland as far as name value? Who's the other one? Uh, Okada. Okada. It's Okada, Osprey and Mercedes. That's the big three. Uh, and then, and then Adam me. Copeland went over there as well. That's a pretty damn big one. But I mean, like I, I look at all these names and I'm like, all of these names, Kyrie, Jade, Andrade, Naomi, Julia, Jacob Fatu, Tama Tonga, they have a lot of fresh upside in WWE and can fit some certain roles, even if they're not top names necessarily. To me, it's not apples to apples because you have to look at case by case. So with Osprey, as we talked about, AEW offered him what WWE wouldn't, right? Yeah. AEW offered him the opportunity to maintain a residence in the UK because he only has to work one show a week. And they're giving him the opportunity to work for other wrestling companies. That wouldn't have happened with WWE. Okada, I'm not sure. Like, I don't know if Okada wants to work other with other promotions or not. Maybe that's something you know, Sean. Yeah. And with Mercedes, uh, I believe we reported on Fightful Select that the, the amount of money that she wanted or expected is what killed talks with WWE. It was. So, so it's not like they chose AEW when it was an apples to apples offer. It wasn't. It's not. The I same. said and the number and WDB effectively confirmed it. At least that's what she she had asked them for or her rep. Right. And even Adam Copeland very honestly said WWE didn't want me full time. WWE didn't really have. I had done everything I could do. They didn't really have a plan for me. It's not the same. It's not apples to apples. And you know what? Maybe the same thing with some of these other people. Maybe Julie is not there without Rossi. You know what there I'm saying? There you go. So they're you have and to Rossi and way. AEW do not get along. Right, they exactly. Do not work exactly. Well together. Kyrie too. Kyrie too. Right. Yeah. I so uh, I, yeah, I've unfortunately been in the middle of the AEW Rossi stuff before, and it, it ain't great. You have to look at each one individually. They're, it's not the same. I completely agree with you there. 
Uh, Alex Fitzgerald says still kind of learning or leaning with how the Copeland promo last week praising AEW to AEW announcing the Bucks will show the footage is all a work leading to Christian and Cope versus the Bucks. Well, I think I think something should lead to Christian and Cope versus the Bucks, but um, I I think that this is a direct response to one the CM Punk interview and the shots last week. That's it. And it's not to say AEW hasn't taken shots at, a at WWE. Of course they do. Plenty. All the time. I just don't have an issue with those. Didn't have an issue with WWE's as well. I just, I don't know. I just, I, I see so much fake outrage over this, Jimmy. And I just don't give a damn that much about it. I like it. It's fun. As long as, and, and in this situation, this was a physical altercation. So this was a thing where, listen, if you get into a physical altercation, you run the risk of, if there's evidence of it, it one day emerging. That's just the, the risk sure. you run in that situation. If you're taking harmless shots otherwise, like Triple H calling it a piss ant company, I didn't care about that. I thought that was a funny joke with a friend on, on a Hall of Fame thing. No issues with that whatsoever. Um, I, I, I see mind it. I, I like the subtle stuff, like Cody using the sledgehammer on the throne. Punk it wasn't saying, subtle. Well, it wasn't subtle. Okay, he but it was a sledgehammer. <laughs> but what I mean was, what I mean was, like they, uh. they, it. So I think the reason that there's some negative discourse is because, depending on what this footage looks like, it's going to make Tony Khan look a certain way. It's going to make AEW look a certain way. It's going to make them look spiteful, and it depends on what it looks like. So again, sure. if it does end up putting guys over, and if it does benefit ta in uh, roster talents then no issue. It's going to depend for me on, on the point, what the point is. Yeah. Kate tells me that the error flag is down off of YouTube, but we're not going to like kick off a live stream. I'll just, <laughs> uh, I'll just repost this on YouTube. Yeah. I assume we'll be good for the list goes on after this. So uh, that should proceed as, as normal. Uh, get in your super chats, get in your humper chats. Van Twinblade says, will Hunter let Shayna go ham after that showing at Bloodsport? I think it would be asinine to let Shayna have a little murder as a treat. It was really great to see how many people were there to support her from WWE. Okay. Uh, all the way to Nick Khan, which FightfulSelect.com. Best $5 in the business. Please subscribe. We reported that he's got a good relationship with Josh Barnett. I don't think it'll necessarily affect Shayna that much. It was just so, like that was her WrestleMania is what that was. Yep. And I thought that was very cool that last week they're like, okay, Ivar Ricochet, you're not on the show. Here's your WrestleMania. Bronson Reed, you're not on the show. You're going to win this battle royal. Then you're going to get in the fatal four-way. Right. I love that. They made it mean something. I wish it would have been on Mania, but they made it mean something. They immediately gave him a, a shot to earn an opportunity at the title based on that. I, there are some things that I wish would have been different, but I really appreciate that WDB was like, hey, guys, we don't have room for you on this show, but here's an opportunity to make your moments. Even Chelsea got a promo talking about that, which I thought was kind of cool. Some stuff at the Slammies as well. Like that. They, they're maximizing their talent in that sense. Chelsea Green, is there anybody else that could take a 30 second squash match and somehow put a spotlight on themselves? Yeah. There's nobody else, I don't think, in, in the division that could have done it the way that she did. I you definitely notice that they are now they've chosen the talent, say for the Rob Ran, and they're trying to find stuff for them to do, whether it be Bronson, whether it be Chad Gable, whether it be Ricochet. Shinsuke Nakamura, I think, is headed to NXT. Uh, I yeah. think that him losing to Dragonoff was not by accident. So I think he's heading to NXT, but uh, they're definitely finding ways for these guys to be utilized better. Chad Gable, I've been I've been pumping his tires for four years. Yeah. And uh, he's going to go heel next week in Montreal, I bet. I hope and so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I think so. And I could see him having a great run with the Intercontinental title, too. Mercedes Okada will contracts more than three years. That I don't know. Um, I would imagine they're about that long. Imagine. Don't aggregate that. Mr. Andrew says, My friends and I were at Mania and we were surprised by the lack of overall pyro except for specific moments. Any idea why it was less than normal? Not officially. My hunch is. They probably want to make it seem a little bit more special and, and utilize it that way. And also, I mean, they had to do major setups for WrestleMania as well. So not not exactly the easiest to get in there, clean up, all that. And if they do a dome next year, I would imagine it would be the same. I could speculate on one thing. I don't recall what mania it was. There was a mania where they were in an outdoor stadium, and because of the wind, they burned some people. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, and I was at... Jimmy, I was at Raw 1001. They caught the damn arena on fire. 
There you go. There you go. But because of the elements there, it was really windy and, and chilly. Maybe they cut yeah. back a little bit because it could have been risky. Patrick Faruga says, what can AEW do to differentiate themselves from WWE? Like WCW tried to do. List goes on. Could be a Discord live stream if YouTube is still broken. That's a very good idea. Um, also, I appreciate the non-clickbait nature of Fightful. The only ethical way to go. Well, I appreciate that. I also want to say I appreciate how Dax Harwood handled when we had a thumbnail that was a little misrepresentative. Yeah. And he said that he, I spoke with him personally, too. And that's that's how I prefer. And he know, he knows that as well, which is why he approached it the way that he did. And listen, the writer of that is a very, very good writer. I had told him, you know what? I don't agree with your use of the thumbnail here unless he explicitly mentioned CM Punk. There's really no need to do that. We all agreed. He apologized to Dax. Dax said no heat. Um, that's the way that stuff like this is supposed to be handled instead of the LMAO Fightful. Listen, <laughs> if you're if you're praying on Fightful's downfall, God you're going to be waiting a long ass time. You're going to be waiting a long ass time. Thank you, by the way, for the uh, overall subscriber record this week. We greatly appreciate it, guys. But um, I want to I want to address what they said. What can AEW do? I think they got to stay the course. Stay the course. Like they when they tried doing the promo segments, like you said, they can't be WWE light. You you've got to where you are. Granted, you know it's it's a it's a bit of a niche audience, but you're doing well. They're going to get a new television deal. They're still top three on Wednesday nights. I think they got to stay the course. You know, put their heads down and just keep on pushing forward. And uh, to put over Discord a little bit more, uh, I have mentioned this for quite a while. I'll promote it again. Outside of like some news and some live tweets during shows, I'm going to largely be off of Twitter. Uh, I just don't really want to do it anymore. Uh, if you you follow me for news and stuff like that, you'll still get that there. But I am going to be on Discord a lot. I'm already on Discord a lot, but uh, that's where you're, that's where you get it. Fightfulselect.com and subscribe. I hear everybody saying I can't access it. I can't access it. Yes, you can. Download it on your your desktop or your phone. Connect it with the same email address you use with Patreon, and there's a connect option in there. Trust me when I say, if I can figure this out, you can also <laughs> figure this out. Because I swore I wouldn't be the old dude who didn't know how to run technology. I am very much that. Uh, so wait, whoa, whoa. If, if that's what you are, what the hell am I? Boy, you are a dinosaur. I got a foot in the grave already, I guess, in comparison. Yeah, you, One thing I will 60. say. Pushing 60. Yeah. If you go on select, uh, there's instructions there. I believe Mike Straw put them up a while back. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll, we'll put a sticky post up. I'll ask Mike Straw to do it again, and then we'll post a sticky. Why is Paige Van Zant still signed? It's a technicality. She ain't ever wrestling again. Nicholas says recently WWE's been showing the winning pin from Re Peacock Wrestle on from Peacock's WrestleMania stream on YouTube. Is there anything you've heard on that? They used to black it out. It used to be a, a specific agreements they would have with pay per view providers or um, or any number of things that like like agreements that were placed there. The way they would they didn't want to undercut their replays too. Exactly -view replays I'm just on that. Yes. Pay-per-view replays on Tuesday used to be a very, very big business for WWE, Jimmy. Yes. I know a lot of our audience. One, if, if you're a 20-year-old watching this show, you probably don't even remember buying WWE pay-per-views in general because they've been around for a decade. But what they would often do is they would run the pay-per-view on Sunday. Then Monday, you'd watch Raw, and they'd say, order the replay. And then yes. Tuesday night, you get the replay. But um, And they didn't want to undermine that. That's exactly why. Still images. Yes. yes. And now, literally, the pin can happen at 11 o'clock and 11.01. It's on Twitter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's different. It's a different time. But you're right. They, they used to do the pay-per-view replays. And obviously, I think Peacock mostly cares about the live stream. Guys, head over to FightfulSelect.com. It is the best $5 in the business, the best $54 a year in the business. If you want to save a little bit of money, we have exclusive news, and when I say we have exclusive news, we have more than anybody. It's more accurate than anybody's. We have over 40 podcasts a month. We just passed 2,000 total. We have exclusive interviews that drop over there. It's not just, oh, hey, we post news, and then it ends up elsewhere. No, very, I'll tell you how many aggregators I've had uh, that I haven't had to correct. Zero. There are zero of them that I haven't had to say, hey, this isn't accurate. We've also got Discord over there, a wonderful community. Come hang out. Um, I asked somebody, or had somebody asking, it was at Wally Mania, actually. They go, hey, why, why is Fightful Select still $5? I was like, because I don't want anybody who can't afford wrestling news or has to go, 
oh, you know what? That's not in my budget to be like, I can't do it. It's the cheapest that's ever existed. That's that's what I wanted to do. It's helped us out immensely. And uh, that's where we're headed for the list goes on, guys. Thank you all so much. And Sean knows I've brought I brought this subject with him before. Of course. And I and, fought it. Yeah, he did. He did. I he fought, fought I fought the paywall. The paywall was a good idea. Jimmy has broached the idea of doing like I think it was $75 a month he wanted to charge for. Yes, that's what it was. $183 a month. Yeah. I grabbed Jimmy by his collar and I said, yes, that's what you do it. Don't you do it. Everything verbatim um, what he said. It's all completely accurate. Yeah. We'll have the footage uh, uh, on our YouTube tonight at eight o'clock. Yes. (laughs) Yes. There we go. We've still got a whole gang of footage that I did two and a half years ago in Toronto, including me beating Joel Pearl with a very explicit device um, that have never aired. Maybe we'll make those Fightful Select exclusives too. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that. Rob Rob did some editing on it, but without the direction and timeline, it was just like, ah, what are we going to do here? Uh, guys, thank you all so much. We're heading over to the list goes on. We're out.